Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skokin. We are starting Chapter 12, which is all about circles, and we're going to start out with Section 12-1, Lines That Intersect Circles. Objectives include identify tangents, secants, and chords, and use properties of tangents to solve problems. Our new vocab, interior of a circle, exterior of a circle, chord, secant, tangent of a circle, point of tangency, congruent circles, concentric circles, tangent circles, and common tangent. Have a lot of vocab this time. We've got a warm-up to start with. What I'd like you to do is turn off the video, work on those four questions, and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. For numbers one and two, I provided a little bit of extra information, just a reminder so that you can remember what the forms of vertical and horizontal lines look like. All right, let's start talking about circles. The interior of a circle is the set of all points inside the circle, and the exterior of a circle is a set of all points outside the circle. There's nothing mysterious in these definitions, but we want to make a distinction early on so that we can start talking about what's going on inside and outside the circles. Next, let's take a look at some definitions of lines and segments that intersect circles. A chord is a segment whose endpoints lie on the circle. So a segment and the endpoints lie on the circle, like chord AB. A secant is a line that intersects a circle at two points, and you can see the secant line L. And then we have a tangent, which is a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point. And line M is an example of a tangent line. The location where the tangent line intersects the circle is called the point of tangency. In example number one, we want to identify the lines and segment that intersect our circle, the circle with center L. All right, let's talk about chords. Remember, chords are segments that go through a circle and intersect the circle at two points. And we've got two of them. We've got segment KM and segment JM. There is one secant, and it is line JM. And the difference between the secant and the chord, of course, is that a chord is a segment and a secant is a line. Next, we're looking for a tangent, and the tangent can be found by a single point of contact or of intersection with the circle. And we have line lowercase m, which is our tangent line. We also have a diameter, and the diameter of this circle is segment km. And then we have three radii, segment KL, segment JL, and segment LM. All right, that gets us through the first part of example number one. Next, there's a now you try to work on, and you've got the segment with center P. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Remember to be careful with notation on these questions because segment ST is different than line ST. Be clear with your communication, and part of that is notation. Next, let's talk about pairs of circles. We remember the term congruent, and it means that things are the same size, and two circles are congruent if they have the same size radius. Concentric circles are circles that are both in the same plane and that have the same center. Then we have tangent circles that can intersect at one point. That can happen with one circle inside the other, like these two, or it can happen that we have a point of tangency between two circles that where one is not inside the other, where they're next to each other instead. Next, let's take a look at example two. In example number two, we want to identify tangents of circles. So we want to find the length of each radius of each of the two circles in each of the two diagrams, identify the point of tangency, and then write the equation of the tangent line where the two circles intersect, the line that goes between the two circles. So we're going to start out using proper notation, of course, and we're going to say the circle with center R has a radius of two units. We can see this on our graph, 1, 2. Okay, now we're going to do the circle with center S, and that has a radius of 1 and 1 half units. 
Next, we want to identify the point of tangency. And the point of tangency is where the two circles connect. We can see that this point is where they intersect with one another. So the point of tangency has coordinates negative 2, comma, 0. Last of all, we want to identify the equation of the tangent line. And as we said, the tangent line is the line that goes between the points, or I'm sorry, between the circles. So in this case, we've got a horizontal line that goes through the point of tangency, and all horizontal lines are going to be of the form y equals, in this case, it's y equals 0 is the constant, and that is it for this example. Next, you have a now you try. So pause the video and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. These questions are pretty st straightforward, so let's take a look next at some tangent lines. In the diagram on the left, we see that the two tangent lines, they're common to two circles, and the two circles are between the two tangent lines, so that makes lines L and M external tangents to circle A with center A and circle with center B. In the right-hand diagram, we see that the tangent lines go between the two circles, so we would say that lines P and Q are common internal tangents to circle with center A and circle with center B. And just as a reminder, the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So we're going to see what that means in the theorems. 12-1-1 says, if a line is tangent to a circle, then it is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. 12-1-2 is kind of the converse of that one because it says, if a line is perpendicular to the radius of a circle at the point on the circle, then the line is a tangent to the circle. Theorem 12-1-3 says, if two segments are tangent to a circle at the same external point, and in this case we have point A, then the segments are congruent. So that makes that tangent congruent to that tangent. This is going to allow us to solve some problems that we will see in example 4. Example 4 tells us that segments HK and, seg and HG are tangent to the circle with center F. And we know because of theorem 12-1-3 that that means that they are congruent to one another. And so that's how we're going to set this problem up. The question is asking us to find the length HG. We know that segment HK is congruent to segment HG, and that means that their two lengths are equal. And we can substitute in 5A minus 32 is equal to 4 plus 2A, and then we solve this as we do any other algebraic equation, and we end up with 3a is equal to 36, a is equal to 12, and of course we're going to plug that in to find hg, and that's going to give us a length hg of 28. This question is fairly straightforward, and now you've got a, now you try a and b to work on to practice this new theorem that we just learned about. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Both of these problems were pretty straightforward, although I know we don't always like to work with fractions, but multiplying everything in the equation by 4 makes it a little bit easier to deal with. That brings us to the end of this lesson and time to start homework. See you back in class.